everybody and welcome to another video and today we're going to be learning how to make this um, Celtic knot motif which is very versatile. Um, I originally when I first came up with this I don't know why I never shared this as a video. I was trying to do some like almost like traffic light earrings um, and I made these earrings and I wear them all the time and I always get compliments on them. Um, they are quite long, you know, lengthwise, um, but no longer than a fringe earring. Um, you know, so if you like big earrings, this is for you. <laughs> if you don't like big earrings, this is for you. They're extremely lightweight, which is one thing I like about them. Um, and they have these two millimeter crystals in them. Uh, which you can see here, but by making them the same color as your outside, uh, it it accents the actual uh, knot motif that is in the middle. So here you can kind of see like in the, you can see the knot motif because uh, I chose a clear crystal there. So um, what you want to do is either choose one that matches your background or uh, a clear one to show it off. And you can see I've kind of arranged them a little different here. I used the crystals to just join them all together. And in this earring that I'm making today, I have actually um, used three of the seed beads uh, and done a triple join. And I've put some little accents on there as well. And you could totally um, chain these together you know, put in to make a bracelet. Um, you know, you could put another point here and then not a point here. And I'll show you when we're making the, the round, you can actually stop at the gold round as well. So you can have a smaller one and then the bigger one with the outline and then the smaller. So there are a lot of possibilities with this. Um, and if you just want a simpler one, you could just have the motif and add a drop and you know very cute little earring right so so you can kind of do whatever you like um if you're making a bracelet i like these um i don't have the right color but i like these uh box clasps um that you know you just pinch it and it comes out uh for a bracelet because they have the uh, two little connectors kind of in a good place to connect on. So you might want to consider that for your clasp, um, something like that. Okay, and the second thing I want to talk about before we start is thread. Um, so in this one, I used a dragon thread, uh, size six, and I actually need to go back and reinforce this top bit a little bit because it's kind of pulling up and it's just a little bit floppy and that's my fault. I should have sewn around this way to keep this from pulling this bit up. Um, so in the most recent one I made, which I think is, yeah, this one, I used eight pound fire line and it's a lot stiffer. So I like that. Um, but you might want to use a thinner, th thinner thread when you're joining the motifs together in that case okay um but yeah i like this earring i think it's very dramatic and um cool i tried it on and you know i didn't think it was too long and like i say they're really lightweight so um and this little butterfly i had this in my stash for absolute years so i actually went on the internet to see if you can get them and you can. You can get them at BB Craft. You can get them at um, people on Etsy were selling them. So they seem to be readily available. But I just think it's uh, a very cute little addition to the actual um, earring. And it matches my beads really well. I think, I think it might be a rose gold finish. And maybe that's why. Um, okay. So, like I say, you can make earrings. You can make a necklace. You can make a bracelet just connect everything together. But we're gonna learn how to make a motif. So you don't need very much thread. Um, you only need about 15 inches for one. Um, 
and I have been pulling off 30 inches and doing two at a time um, with my 30 inches, so that's why I'm saying 15 is probably enough. Uh, and I'm leaving a four inch tail. I'm Today I'm using Toho beads simply because it doesn't matter what seed beads, they don't have to be the most regular. These are super cheapy beads um, that I made these in. And um, so I'm not using, you know, usually I use Miyuki, but I have some Toho beads and I liked the colors that I had for these. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna use Toho today. <laughs> so here we are. So I'm using the Permafinish um, 593, which is the almond, metallic almond gold one. And then I'm using these a 939. And it's not the best match with my two millimeter um, crystals. I'm using from Potomac, uh, the two millimeter emerald. Uh, the green is slightly, this is a slightly more bluish green than the seed beads, but you can't really see it. So it's, you know, nobody's going to look that closely. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got your 15 inches. You're leaving your tail about two times the length of your needle. And you're going to pick up four of your um, 11 o seed beads and push them down to leave your your tail. So I'm leaving, like say, about two times the length of my needle, four inches. Um, and I'm just gonna sew back through the very first seed bead, okay? From the tail end, and that's gonna form a circle. When I pull it, it's gonna form a little uh, diamond shape like this, okay? So now I'm going to pick up one more seed bead and I'm going up through the next bead. And it's just gonna sit in there like that. I'm gonna pick up another. I'm gonna sew through the next bead. So now I have two and you can see it's starting to form a square. I'm gonna do it two more times. So just put one in, pull, and just keep your tail off to the back. Um, and I'm gonna put in my last one here. So coming out here, going in here, and I'm going to enter uh, So I now have my four on and I'm gonna step up into the corner bead. The next corner. Okay, so I have this. So now I'm going to pick up an 11, a two millimeter bicone, and an 11. And I'm just going to pop straight into the next corner. And I'm just going to try and get that bicone to sit straight. Uh, you're going to repeat this four times, so uh, so it's just um, 11 by cone 11, going to the next corner. So we're just working around in a circle here with our beads. And I like to try and get it to sit nicely before I move on. It doesn't always happen, but uh, you can try. <laughs> okay. Uh, Again, I'm going to do 11 by cone 11. I'm gonna go into the next corner. And one more 11 by cone 11. And this is the corner. So you're looking at your central square here and you want to go into the corner of that central square to finish off around. Okay. See, these kind of go a little bit crooked, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, you just want to make sure you don't have any slack there. So you should have something that looks like this. Okay. And I'm coming out from this corner. So I'm going to move up through the next gold bead here. 
and through the bicone. Okay, just turning so that my thread's coming out this way. All right, uh, so now I'm going to pick up four of my gold beads. Okay, and I'm going to enter into the very next bicone. So I'm just jumping from this bicone into the next bicone like this. Again, I'm going to pick up four. I'm going to enter into the next bicone and do that two more times. Enter into the next bicone and one more time. and into the last bicone. Now, remember how I said you can make smaller motifs if you wanted to? This would be the smaller motif. So if you wanted to stop here, you could. And look, you could make a bracelet. You could join them together like this, okay? And just keep going. Um, you know, you could even put some pearls or other color crystals in between or some gold bigger beads or however you want to join it, you can do that. So I would just re reinforce that side if you were stopping there, okay? But we're not, we're gonna make the bigger motif. So um, once you have entered the last crystal, ignore that tail, um, you're going to pass up through the first two of the four seed beads on the outside, okay? And you're going to pick up one of your accent color. So in my case, the green beads. And then I'm just going to go straight through the next two seed beads. And it's just going to sit kind of in between, but not really. Uh, you don't want it to, you want it to kind of pop out like that. You don't want it to be right in between the beads. So don't like try and shove it down in there. You kind of want these to stay together and this to be sticking out, okay? Um, then you're gonna pick up two and you're gonna hop over the crystal and go into the next two 11 O's, okay? And then we're gonna just repeat this all the way around. So we pick up one here, we go through the next two 11 O's and you just want it to kind of poke out there and then you're gonna pick up two. You're gonna jump over the crystal and go through the next two. I'm gonna go all the way around. So one, and two, and one, to the next two and last one two and just go straight through the next two like you've been doing okay so it looks like this and now we're just going to finish off this outside edge so step up into that single bead on the side there, and you're gonna pick up two, and you're gonna go through the next two that are above the crystal, okay? And then again, just pick up two, go through the next one. Pick up two, go through the next two, you're just going to fill in the entire edge just like this with two each time.
Okay, so I have finished filling in my edge. So um, this is a very important step here. You're going to go all the way around again. And the way I like to remember where I started is I count as I pass each of my bicones. So I'll kind of go, okay, I passed through one, I passed past one bicone. And you're just going through all of your outside beads. I've passed by my second bicone. I've passed my third bicone. And I'm now passing my fourth bicone. Okay. Um, now, when you're tying your knot, I recommend that you do not tie it uh, next to where the four gold beads are. I recommend you tie it um, where there's a crystal because if you're doing connections, it's usually in here and you'll have to sew a few times through that. So um, I tend to tie mine um, above the crystal. So I would just sew forward a few beads to get next to a crystal area. It doesn't have to be the one right here. You can do the join there. Um, I just sew through and then I, because my thread's short, I just push my, at the end of my needle and I can kind of then guide my loop exactly where I want it to do, where I want it to go. And I only do a half hitch because um, you don't want to clog up your holes too much, okay? And um, also fire line tends to hold really well anyway, so. <laughs> Okay, and then I can just cut that one off. Um, then I will need to thread my other end and cut that end off. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I joined these together and added the little embellishments on. Okay, I'm back. And um, it just occurred to me as I was tying off, it might be a smart idea to tie off in the center and that way you're not not going to be blocking off the outside and I don't know why I didn't think of that before but um yeah you might want to sew back down to the center and then tie your thread off um okay so I've actually switched to my thinner um dragon thread the six pound just because I am a little worried about getting through um all of my uh, places so I'm just going to pick up a stop bead really quickly um, and put that on and you want quite a long thread for this because you are going to be going around the motif twice and it always takes more than you think it does so okay so I've got a stop bead on um, so I just sewed through it twice basically I sewed through it and then sewed through it again and it just has a little loop of thread around it and I can just slide it up and down so I can just easily just tug that off at the end okay um, okay so I'm going to enter into my motif and when you're doing this just check that your crystals are on the diagonal and your four are at the top and the bottom okay uh, so I'm going to just enter in a random bead next to where my crystal is and I'm going to sew through until I'm coming out right before that middle bead there. Okay, so I'm going to come out just before the middle bead. And um, the stop beads just to stop me from pulling my thread completely through. <laughs> okay, uh, so I actually I'm going to go through that one bead right there. I'm going to do this a little different than I did the other one. And now that I've learned, um, I'm going to pick up three of my gold beads and I'm going to sew through that bead again just to make a little pico on the edge and that's going to be where my earring loop goes in. Um, then I'm going to sew all the way around the edge of the first motif here because I don't want to add the little side embellishment on the top or the bottom. 
you can if you want. If you want, if you wanted to only do two, you could do it like this and have the little side motifs on the second one. And you know, I mean, it's all it's entirely up to you. But this is how I'm going to do it. Um, and what I want to do is I want to exit. So here's the middle of the the next, uh, the opposite where I started. This bead right here that's between the two of the four, okay? I want to come out right before the one before that because I'm going to have three beads of a gap, okay? So I'm going to come out right here. So you see those are like, the, there's that center one. So I'm leaving one extra and then I'm coming out here. I'm going to pick up one of my 11 O's and then I'm going to enter into, oops, got a little tangled. Okay, I've got one of my 11 O's. I'm going to enter into not the bead that's in the middle of the four, not the next one, but the next bead is the one I want to go into. So I'm skipping one after that and then I'm sewing through and I want to exit the fifth bead right here. So this is like the middle of that side. That one I'm coming out right before it. Okay. And um, actually no, because I'm changing how I'm doing it. I'm going to go into that middle bead on that side. Sorry, I did it differently when I did it. Okay, we're gonna pick up three again, because we're adding that little pico, and I'm gonna sew into that bead again. And then I am going to just make sure I don't have any slack. Just make sure you've pulled any slack thread so that your two uh, motifs are next to each other. And this one's flipped around. Don't worry about that. As long as you get it correctly when you're going back down the other side, you'll be okay. Um, and again, I want to exit the one from uh, leaving one before the middle one. So I have to leave these three. So I'm going to work my way up. here so that's the middle one I'm leaving one more and I'm exiting here again I'm gonna do the same thing so I'm just picking up a single bead and then I'm picking up my next motif and find that middle bead skip one and go through the next few beads okay so I've now got three in a row joined. Now I don't have any side embellishments on my bottom uh, so I'm just going to work my way all the way down until I come out from that middle bead at the bottom which is where I'm going to add my next pico. Okay so here's the middle bead at the bottom. This one right here that I'm coming out of. And I'm just checking that I don't I didn't create any slack and it's fine like I said if your things are twisting around at this point that's okay um, I'm picking up three again and I'm re-entering into that middle bead and then I'm going to go all the way around to the other side and I'm aiming for the to exit from the third bead so that's the middle that's the second i'm aiming to exit from this third bead here okay okay so i'm at my third i'm exiting from that third bead And now I need to check that my next motif is arranged in this correct pattern. Uh, so make sure that the four are there and your 
crystals or at the diagonals and you have that one bead right there, okay? You're gonna pick up one and you're going to sew through the three beads at the bottom here, okay? You're going to sew up this one bead on the other side that we just added. You're going to sew through two. So you're coming out from the middle bead on the bottom, okay? Okay, and now I'm going to pick up one more. So my thread is coming out on the right hand side. I'm going to sew from the right to the left through that very middle bead on the upper motif. I'm coming out the lower motif. Like this, then I'm gonna sew down through that bead that I just added, okay. Like this. Then I have to sew through the middle bead again, going towards the direction that I originally started. So I did this side, I'm going back up on my other side. So I have to sew through from the left hand side to the right. So you should have a thread on each side of that bead, okay? And then you can sew up through the one that you've added on that side. And we're gonna go up here and create a pico. And when you're coming out from that center uh, side bead, pick up your three again. And you're gonna go through again. To add on the pico, okay? And then we need to add our top up here. So I'm going to exit, leaving three beads in the middle here. Okay, I've got my three, my gap of three. I need to turn this so that it's facing the correct way and then I'm going to pick up my last um, gold, well actually it's not my last, my second to last gold seed bead. I'm going to go through the three in the middle like this. I'm going to go down the one on the side I'm going to go through two in the middle. Make sure I pull all that. Don't want that. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up one more seed bead. I'm gonna go back. So I'm, my thread's coming out the right. I'm going right to left through that middle top seed bead. Then I'm going down through the bead I just added. Oop. Trying not to get myself caught, okay. And then I'm going to enter that middle seed bead going back towards the right, go through two beads and then exit up through that gold bead. So you're going through the middle bead of the motif plus the next bead, okay? And I'm just going to make sure I don't have any slack here before I move up. And I'm going to work my way around until I get to where my tail is.
And when I reach where my tail is, I can take my stop bead off and I'm going to tie a square knot. And then, okay, so just slide that um, stop bead off. So I'm going to tie a square knot here. So I, I'm just going right over left with my needle. Now my needle's in my left hand. So I'm putting again the needle on the top and twisting it under. Okay, so I have a knot, but I need to go back and reinforce again. So I'm gonna run all the way around the outside, but when I get to um, where the picots are, instead of going through the middle and looping around, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exit from this bead and then I'm just gonna go over the top. Uh, so I'm not going to do the loop. I'm just going over the top and if you really want to make them pop out, you can just skip the top one. So you could just go up through these and then over, skip that one, go back and go down, 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 up this one, skip, down, down, down. So you're not going through that middle gold bead that is under, sorry, the middle green bead that is under the peak, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna show you me doing that because it's kind of boring, but I'll do that. And um, then I will come back and put my earring finding on and we will be done. Okay, I'm back and I just wanted to show you, I mean, I love how you can fit these together. You could make three sections like this and just join them uh, with a little smaller area in the middle, like a little accent. And how nice would that be as a bracelet? Wouldn't that be beautiful? Um, so, I mean, I just love how versatile this little motif is. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, the way I made these turned out a lot better, especially once I went around and reinforced and skipped that middle um, one. So yes, definitely use the eight pound fire line if you have it. And um, all right, so all I'm gonna do to attach on my earring motif is first I'm going to, there's kind of a gap there. So first thing I'm gonna do is wiggle it inward so that I don't have a gap when I'm actually gonna close it. And um, once I'm happy with how that is closed up, I am going to twist it open again. <laughs> Seems counterproductive, I know. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pop it through one of the end motifs there, the little picots. Um, I don't think there, it doesn't matter. There's no front or back, so. Uh, and then I'm just gonna twist that back closed again with my bent nose. I find it easier to use bent nose pliers for this. Okay, all right. Um, I just love these little earring tops. I think they're so cute. Okay, so here are my uh, St. Patrick's Day earrings. Um, like I said, you can make lovely little necklace, you can make bracelets, you can make anything you want to really um, with this little motif. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have a great weekend. And I'm going to try and start uploading a video every Friday um, instead of just random days. I feel like I need a little bit more of a structure. It might not happen every week as planned, you know, but I'm going to try this and just see how it goes for a little while. So um, I will see you guys next week. Um, and in the meantime, take care. Bye for now.